Chapter 16. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord waiteth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. When a man's ways please the Lord, he may maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king. His mouth transgresseth not in judgment. A just weight and balance are the Lord's. All the weights of the bag are his work. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth the matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it. But the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth, and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb sweet to the soul and health to the bones. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. He that laboreth, laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. A violent man enticeth his neighbor, and leadeth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things, moving his lips, he bringeth evil to pass. The hoary head is a crown of glory, if it be found in the way of righteousness. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. Opening Sentence Proverbs 16, verse 1, The Preparations of the Heart in Man, and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. God has been training His King to judge His people according to His word. To give an answer implies making a judgment. Proverbs 15, verse 28 stated that the heart of the righteous man studieth to answer. God provided man with His word to study in order that he may speak right things. Finding the theme, Free Will and Judgment Proverbs 16 is about the free will of man and the judgment of the Lord. The Lord is mentioned eleven times in this chapter, more than any other chapter in the book of Proverbs. The phrase better than is encountered four times, indicating the necessity of free will in order to make a choice between two or more options, clean or unclean. Proverbs 16 verse 2 All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits, Most men proclaim their own goodness, Proverbs 20 verse 6, but their true condition will be revealed when they are placed in the balance and judged by God's word. Long ago, Job asked an important question, what man can bring a clean thing out of an unclean? Job answered his own question with not one. See Job 14 verse 4, Instructions for the King. Proverbs 16 verse 3, Commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. This is the second time that the implied subject of you is found in section 2 of Proverbs. You commit thy works unto the Lord. While this verse can be applied as a general principle to all who read it, in the context of this chapter, God is speaking directly to the man, or king, who is the ruler of his people. The first example of you as implied subject is found in Proverbs 14 verse 7. From chapter 16 and onward, the Proverbs begin to focus more on the king of Israel. The king is expected to speak right things and to make right judgments based on God's word. And the king of Israel has received power from God to mete out punishments and rewards. The authority of God and the free will of created beings. Proverbs 16 verse, For the Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil, 
All things that the Lord made for himself is plainly laid out in Colossians. Colossians 1.16 For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. It is a mistake to interpret Proverbs 16 verse 4 as the Lord made the wicked to be. Wicked because the first power, governing authority, that the Lord established was free will or self-government. Jesus created heavenly authorities, thrones, dominions, principalities, and powers to rule in the heaven, and he also created authorities to rule on the earth. Lucifer was one of those created heavenly authorities. Lucifer had free will and chose to rebel against God. God created Lucifer but he did not make Lucifer evil. The following verse confirms this truth. Proverbs 16, 5 Every one that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord, though hand join in hand. He shall not be unpunished. Lucifer was proud in heart. Job 41, verse 34. Ezekiel 28, verse 17. Isaiah 14, verse 13. And he will be punished for his rebellion along with all those who joined with him. The following proverb indicates that men can choose to depart from evil. Proverbs 16, 6 By mercy and truth. Iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. The blessing of obedience. Proverbs 16, verse 7 When a man's ways please the Lord, he mocketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. God dealt with Israel as a nation. If the king walked in the way of the Lord, the entire nation enjoyed God's blessings. If the king was wicked, the whole nation suffered for it. A little is better than great revenue. Proverbs 16 verses 8 to 10 better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. A man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. A divine sentence is in the lips of the king, his mouth transgresseth not in judgment. The use of the phrase better than implies that a choice or judgment must be made between two options. How is a man to make such a choice? The Lord has already directed the man in the way with his word. When the king believes the word of God in his heart, his lips will utter a righteous judgment. A sentence is a decision pronounced publicly by a judge. A divine sentence is a judgment uttered by a ruler in agreement with God's word. God's word is his work. Proverbs 16 verse 11 A just weight and balance are the Lord's, all the weights of the bag are his work. Psalm 111 2-3 The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and his righteousness endureth forever. In Genesis 1 verse 2 When God began to work, the Holy Spirit moved, and he spoke. God's word is his work. Everything that God speaks is honorable, glorious, excellent, right and true. Proverbs 8 verses 6 to 9. The authority of the king. Proverbs 16 verses 12 to 15. It is an abomination to kings to commit wickedness, for the throne is established by righteousness. Righteous lips are the delight of kings, and they love him that speaketh right. The wrath of a king is as messengers of death, but a wise man will pacify it. In the light of the king's countenance is life, and his favor is as a cloud of the latter rain. At this point in Israel's history, their kingdom is at the height of glory under the reign of King Solomon. The surrounding kings and kingdoms are blessed by blessing the nation of Israel according to the promise God made to ever Abraham. Genesis 12 verse 3 However, Solomon and the nation of Israel soon forgot God and began to worship the false gods of the surrounding kingdoms. God had prophesied that this would happen. Deuteronomy 31 verse 16 As punishment, Israel eventually lost their great kingdom, were scattered into the other nations, and made subject to Gentile kings. Daniel, a Jew who lived in Babylonian captivity, fully trusted in the word of God and acted accordingly. Daniel is an example of just such a wise man who pacified the wrath of four Gentile kings. Daniel 1 verses 18 to 21. The following proverbs continue to emphasize the importance of making the right choices. Wisdom is better than gold. 
Proverbs 16 verses 16 to 18 How much better is it to get wisdom than gold, and to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver? The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before a fall. Humility is better than pride. Proverbs 16 verses 19 to 20 Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly, than to divide the spoil with the proud. He that handleth a matter wisely shall find good, and whoso trusteth in the Lord, happy is he. Wise heart, sweet words. The following verses emphasize the source of wisdom. The words of God are as sweet as honey, and they are likened to a well of living water which can strengthen the inner man. Proverbs 16,21-24 The wise in heart shall be called prudent, and the sweetness of the lips increaseth learning. Understanding is a wellspring of life unto him that hath it, but the instruction of fools is folly. The heart of the wise teacheth his mouth, and addeth learning to his lips. Pleasant words are as an honeycomb, sweet to the soul, and health to the bones. A way that seems right to man. Proverbs 16 verse 25 There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. The word way is found 79 times in the book of Proverbs, more than any other book of the Bible. It is found seven times in chapter 16, which is more than any other chapter in the book of Proverbs. The following verses describe particular men who go their own way and do what is right in their own eyes. Proverbs 16,26-30 He that laboreth laboreth for himself, for his mouth craveth it of him. An ungodly man diggeth up evil, and in his lips there is as a burning fire. A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. A violent man enteseth his neighbor, and letteth him into the way that is not good. He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things, moving his lips he bringeth evil to pass. This description is not positive. Men are unclean in the sight of God, and often make the wrong choices. Men work for selfish reasons, men are ungodly and speak evil, men are froward, selfish and refuse to yield to God, men sow words of strife, and men are violent, and seduce their neighbors to sin. While this description is negative, it is very beneficial for a man to understand the truth about himself. Old and Gracious Proverbs 16 verses 31 to 32 The hoary head is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. He that is slow to anger is better than the mighty, and he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh a city. These two verses describe an elder who rules his spirit. He is only able to do this if he makes a choice to walk in the way of righteousness. Conclusion Proverbs 16 verse 33 The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He ultimately determines the outcome of every man's choice. He is so wise that he is able to do so without violating free will. Summary The Lord directs man's steps in a way that does not violate his free will. He does this by his word. God instructs men in the way of righteousness in hopes that man will learn wisdom and choose to follow him. If man rebels against his word, God chastises him in hopes that man will return to the right path. Ultimately, man has free will to choose his own path, but he cannot resist the consequences of his choices. The wages of sin is death. God is a good and righteous king who will faithfully mete out righteous punishment and rewards. Dispensational Consideration In time past, God gave his word to his people Israel. He appointed a king to rule over them and to judge them based on his word. In this present dispensation, the Apostle Paul was given new revelation from Jesus Christ to govern the church. In the epistles of Romans through Philemon, God gave instructions for self-government, family government, and the orderly operation of the local church. Each believer is expected to willingly submit to God's authority in these matters. God does not physically chastise wayward believers. It is the doctrine of the Word of God that will correct and reprove wayward believers. 1 Timothy 3 verse 16
Life Application At this present time, no king rules over believers. Satan is the god of this present evil world. 2 Corinthians 4 verse 4 Galatians 1 verse 4 He accomplishes his work through unbelievers. Ephesians 2 verses 1 to 2 and by deceiving believers with false doctrine. God instituted human government to keep evil in check. Genesis 9 verse 6, Romans 13. Man has the free will to act as he chooses. However, man cannot resist the punishment enforced upon him by the government. Believers will either be governed by the truth contained in the word of God, 1 Thessalonians 2 verse 13, or they will be punished by the governing authorities. Believers can also lose their reward at the judgment seat of Christ. Romans 14 verse 10, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. Then God in his goodness and mercy gave two things to reconcile mankind, his written word, lowercase w, the Holy Bible, and the word, uppercase w, his son Jesus Christ. Other than the physical world, which was created by God and man's consciousness of right and wrong. There is no knowledge of God found outside of his written and preserved words. Each person must choose to believe it or reject it. Proverbs 17 to a wise servant shall have rule over a son that causes shame, and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. In Proverbs chapter 17, God chooses to bless the servant who makes wise choices. Proverbs chapter 16 Homework Concordance Search The word preparations is found only one time in the King James Bible, but the word preparation is found nine times. Study each of these references to discover how this word is defined. Here are some examples. King David made preparations for building the house of the Lord. The nation of Israel prepared to defend themselves against their enemies. The Jews made preparations for keeping the Sabbath day. And believers are to be prepared to make a stand for the gospel. Read Job chapter 14 is a description of the unclean condition of man and the sentence of death that is upon him. But Job spoke of man's future resurrection as a sure thing. Read Job 19 verse 26, while keeping in mind that Job was written long before the law of Moses. This promise of everlasting life in the flesh was understood by all men because of the promise that God made in Genesis 3 verse 15 and 20. Compare and contrast, the words created and made are not the same word, nor are they used the same way in scripture. To create is to make something from nothing. Only God can create. To make is to take pre-existing material and form it into something else. Both God and man can make things. God created man's spirit and soul from nothing, and God made man's body from the pre-existing dust of the earth. A student of the scripture must be careful of every word of God. Question, what is the natural condition of man's heart? See Jeremiah 17 verse 9. Question, how can a man's heart be made clean? See Psalms 119 verse 9, John 15 verse 3 and Ephesians 5 verse 26. Concordance search. Find the phrase better than using blue letter Bible. The phrase occurs 44 times in the King James Bible and 7 times in the book of Proverbs. Study how the phrase is used in Proverbs, and if time allows consider every reference, understanding that a choice is implied with each use. One choice is obviously better than another, therefore the free will of man is necessary for making such choices. Concordance search, find and study the word sentence in a King James Bible. Compare its use with the definition given in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Concordance search find a phrase, slow to anger. It only refers to God. When it is found in Proverbs, it applies to God. But by application, it can be applied to a mature man who has become godly by choosing to believe and obey the word of God. Consider to understand what the Bible teaches about authority in the scripture. There are several words that you may wish to search out and study in a King James Bible, govern over, rule over, king over, under subjection, subject onto, head over, etc. This will make a considerable amount of time, but time spent in the word is always fruitful.